All right. Well, welcome everybody. We'll start with introductions because we are going to use every minute to the best of our, of our advantage today. So um, thank you for joining us for Inventor Inventoro and Sin 7's Preparing for Holiday Demand. Uh, again, today's speakers are Sierra Rogers and Radim Young. Uh, Sierra is the Sin 7 Senior Product Manager, and she's fantastic. You're in for a treat. And Radim as well is incredible, and he is the co-founder of Inventoro. Hi. Um, today's agenda, we're going to go through uh, why it's hard to plan for major shopping holidays, um, how to best use Sin7 to plan for success, also how to use Inventoro for advanced insights, and then we will hopefully have some time for Q&A. Again, if you have questions in the middle of this, don't hesitate, put it in the Q&A function, and we will get to you when we can. Ready? Right, so I'll just start off with uh, with these four takeaways. We'll just turn everything around and start the presentation with takeaways. So I'll be talking about those four points throughout my presentation today. And these are the four things I would like you to remember when preparing for Black Friday or any other seasonal event. I just believe that whatever we'll be talking about today can be applied to any high season because sometimes high seasons happen in summer. It always depends on your product, but the takeaways should be the same. So the first one. The first one is start purchasing early. Uh, clearly, uh, you need to buy a lot of inventory when you're uh, preparing for a Black Friday or a Cyber Monday event. And there are two strategies that you can do. You can you can slowly, gradually buy inventory so you don't overload your, your warehouse and you don't cause any chaos uh, in, in, in the warehouse as you do. Or you can take a second strategy and just uh, buy everything all at once, just a week before Black Friday comes. And hope for the best. And we're, we're going to compare those two later on today. The second takeaway is overstock in a smart way. Uh, obviously, you want to overstock for for Black Friday, but the reality is that one third of your inventory will not be sold uh, during during the high season, and you're going to be left over with goods. You're going to you're going to need to fast they sell later on. So you want to be smart about the way in which items you overstock with, and we're going to show you how that is done. And obviously, we want to keep that number of the one third uh, as low as possible, so you don't hold up cash for, for your overstock. The third one is extremely important. Uh, it's called warehouse honesty. Because preparing for Black Friday is a collective uh, collective strategy that needs to be thought uh, thought of throughout the whole organization. It's a collaboration between sales, between uh, purchasing supply chain managers, the owners, and the suppliers themselves. And all of these parts need to work together and simultaneously make decisions to, to prepare for a good season. And finally, train your staff and fire drill because the days that uh, come to your Black Friday can be chaotic. It's always better to be prepared, and we'll talk about that more later on as well. Yeah, perfect. And and all of that's really good advice mm -hmm. and kind of sets the stage for how to start thinking and planning for your busy season. Like Redeem said, it could be Black Friday or Cyber Monday, or maybe it's Valentine's Day or mm -hmm. back to school or the beginning of summer. Really, it's, you know, whatever your busy season is. Now, whether you're um, a manufacturer, maybe you're a distributor focusing on B2B or even B2C or both, <laughs> or maybe you're a brick and mortar retail store, companies like yours are facing several hurdles when preparing for busy seasons, right? So this is just, let's run through some of these problems or these hurdles that you might be facing, and we'll talk about some of the solutions along with that. So first up, um, inventory management. Now working for an inventory management solution or software, um, I think about this a lot. And one of our key things is making sure that our inventory is accurate. Um, you need to have kind of a baseline uh, for your current inventory to know how much stock you need to add to that um, and specifically for which products. Um, because like Redeem was saying, ultimately a third of your inventory is gonna sit on the shelf past your busy season. Um, but maybe you can have a little more influence into what third that is. And this is super tricky because 
finding the balance between having enough to fill orders while trying to avoid that excess stock as much as possible, um, that that's you know, a tough balance to find, right? You don't want things collecting dust or becoming dead stock, but you want to make sure that you've got enough of what people are, are trying to buy. So proper forecasting and inventory strategies are absolutely essential here. Even for your non-busy season, I would suggest trying to figure out your turnover ratio. We have a great blog on this to de um, determine what your turnover ratio should be based on your industry. So uh, for example, like a car dealership, they expect their cars to sit a bit longer on the lot, but they have fewer of them and they're more expensive, right? That makes sense. But then let's look at a grocery store. They have constantly, they're just restocking their shelves. They have a variety of items uh, and each of those items, they, they have a smaller dollar value than a car. I mean, Formula and diapers aside, of course, right? <laughs> but anywho, so um, just finding what your turnover ratio should be uh, is is definitely key to this. And actually, Lauren, um, I think it'd be great if we could send a link to that blog in our follow-up email because it's it's really insightful. Um, but ultimately, inventory management software like Sin7, it specializes in accurately tracking your inventory to help with lead times, demand patterns, and ultimately help you determine your optimal inventory levels. And then next up is capacity planning. Now, I personally, I focus on manufacturing features with Sin7. So I think about production capacity and capacity planning all the time. Like how much stuff do I need to make in a given amount of time? If you're more of a retail shop or if you do more direct to consumer, don't tune me out quite yet. <laughs> it's um, you can think of it like how many orders can I fulfill in a given time or how many happy customers uh, could leave my shop with products each day. Um, it's just kind of putting a time box on that, right? The challenge with shopping holidays here is making sure that you're staffed uh, and like Redeem was saying, that they're trained properly and that they can handle this increase in demand without other areas suffering. So if you don't increase uh, staffing, on your production line or uh, in your shop, maybe quality checks go out the window. Um, or uh, if you don't um, add coverage in your shop, or maybe it's in your pick and pack area for uh, to fulfill orders, maybe customer satisfaction starts to take a nosedive, which decreases the chance of them returning again and again. Um, my favorite quote is probably failing to plan is a plan to fail. Like if you don't plan out how you're going to manage this influx, Things are going to break down, um, but don't worry. We'll talk about this a little bit more later. And then the last one here is operational efficiency. Another challenge is really inefficiency, right? Major shopping holidays can put your processes and workflows to the test. So before you know it, there are bottlenecks popping up and putting a halt to your production. Uh, maybe you run out of stock because your math was wrong when you placed the order for your supplier. Uh, maybe your equations didn't factor in lead time. So you're not getting your stock in time. So many things can go wrong, but optimizing your processes using tools like Sin7 and Inventoro can help reduce those lead times, minimize waste and scrap, which ultimately reduces um, cost, uh, reduce delays, um, et cetera. All of this equaling more happy customers, right? In a bit, I'll talk more about MRP and material or material requirements planning and how you can use software to make suggestions for things like purchase orders to avoid some of these huge, potentially expensive headaches. Uh, but for now, I'll hand it back to Redeem, who can cover some more uh, challenges. Okay, thank you. So we are all about demand forecasting and inventory. But the way we do it is we look at your historical sales and we run our algorithms, which are AI-based, uh, algorithms which forecast your future sales. Now, forecasting future sales is, is the essential ingredient to getting your inventory right. And it's one-on-one, -on -one, right? So if you know how much you will sell in the future, then you can make a proper uh, assessment on how much you need to buy for your inventory. And especially when you're nearing a high season, you want to get those numbers right because every single sort of percentage that goes sideways is uh, can make a huge strain on, on your cash flow and can have you having the wrong portfolio of products in your warehouse when the when the season comes. So forecasting um, 
SKU by SKU is essential to getting your season right. And doing that with high forecast accuracy uh, is something that cannot be done in an Excel. It cannot be done with human level intuition, especially when you run an operation with several war, uh, warehouses and when you have hundreds, thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of SKUs, then just the complexity of the, of the operation becomes too uh, sophisticated for a human brain to comprehend, and you need to invite technology into your house to, to get that one right. And that is the same to be said about pricing and promotions, especially for, for, um, for the high season, you want to have those high impact top sellers with some competitive price to attract a lot of people. But you also want to make what if you know assessments on, on what will that promotion do? I mean, promotions don't only work up, they also work down. If you promote something, then the rest of the products will decrease in their in their sales. So you want to balance that equally. You want to take a look at um, your warehouse capacity, the amount of promotion you're actually doing. You want to calculate the promotion effect of, of that, and you want to put all of that into balance when you're preparing for a high season. And we'll talk about that later on as well. And coming back to communication and collaboration. Now, the, the demon within the Black Friday event is that all departments have different motivations. I mean, sales think of the organization through their sales channels. They only see, oh, this is how much we're going to sell in Amazon. This is how much we're going to sell in brick and mortar. But supply chain people, they, they just see the structure differently. They, they think of warehouses and how will they move the goods. And if they don't plan accordingly together, sales and uh, supply chain people, then they will find that they have plans that they simply cannot, cannot uh, simply cannot do. It's the same with um, the owner's motivations, because the owner usually wants to make as much money as possible, whereas salespeople want to give as much of a discount as possible. <laughs> and uh, so they all sort of have different ideas on what items should be should be uh, put into the warehouse. Right, the warehouse itself has a limited amount of space, right? And especially for a Black Friday event, you can overstock on everything, but you wanna overstock on the stuff that will attract your customers on the promotion stuff, but you also wanna focus on the stuff that will make you the profit, which are your top sellers, and you need to understand which ones they are. And put all of that into perspective with production because <laughs> And on a typical day, you know, these departments would make a plan and they go to the production, they, they tell them how much they need to do and they will tell them like, okay, we'll supply it in February, which obviously is two months later than it should, right? So all of the departments need to work together and communication uh, is a must. And uh, doing, you know, these meetings together is an essential part of planning uh, for your Black Friday event and taking the decisions together is also an essential part of doing your uh, Black Friday event correctly. Right. So what supply chain management and kind of touches on what I've been already talking about that keeping your suppliers, your distributors and everyone on the on the chain in line with your with your plans. And if there's one part that, you know, causes a lot of strain and a lot of losses along the way then when these organizations become secretive. So if you have a plan, I strongly suggest that you share it with the rest of your of the chain. You show it to your suppliers way ahead. You show it to your production companies way ahead. And you want to make sure that everybody has the same plan. And for that, you know, keeping one source of truth is essential. So we, we like to believe that, you know, since having an inventory is the ideal place to do that, it allows everyone to, to look at the same data. But the philosophy is that you want to you wanna set up a system that everybody sees the same data. When a change happens, that everybody is informed along the supply chain to, to keep everything in an ideal flow. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that actually kind of touches back to the operational efficiency that I was talking about order, uh, earlier and technology systems and, and all of that is kind of a, an extension of that conversation. Um, maybe you're joining us today because you're using disjointed systems and you're looking for that hub or like Redeem was saying, that source of truth to manage all your inventory, your various sales channels, your supply 
uh, management channels, um, all of that. Or maybe your business is growing and you just can't keep up with the spreadsheets anymore. Now, I, I get it. I love spreadsheets. I love math. But managing a business with like 50,000 SKUs, like that's just mentally, that's just really, really difficult. Um, unfortunately, you're, you're bound to make mistakes, right? We're human. Um, or maybe you're using, say, a legacy system and it's not getting feature enhancements. It's often and it's become outdated, and it's actually holding you back from potential growth. No matter what your situation is, in, uh, inadequate technology infrastructure, it, that's what can really hold you back as well. Um, it, hin it hinders those operations, those processes. It hinders the communication with all the different teams. Um, and it ultimately can lead to uh, disappointed customers, right? So updating your processes, updating your workflows is a step towards your future success. And that's where I believe Sin7 and Inventoro can help, which leads to the next slide, which is just goes over how can we help? Like what kind of things do we actually do? Um, Sin7 is an inventory management software and we provide various tools and features to help businesses like yours. Um, to manage inventory effectively, to manage the CRM, to manage, um, maybe it's your your uh, point of sales, right? Maybe you have a B2B site. Uh, if you engage with contract manufacturing, uh, all of this, we, we can manage all of this across multiple sales channels, like your Shopify, your Walmart, your Amazon, et cetera, as well as multiple locations. Uh, we're here to help grow with you, right? Um, and then if you are looking to expand your insights, then uh, to make informed, intelligent, data-driven decisions, um, I would say integrating with Inventoro is a no-brainer. It really helps take you to the next level. Um, and then I, I guess I'll, I'll head into giving you some demos to kind of show what does this look like, right? So first up, I wanna go back to talking about planning. Remember like that failing to plan is a plan to fail. <laughs> so I wanna show you some of the steps that Sin7 users can take to set themselves up for successful planning and how we can use some of our scheduling uh, and planning features to really help you meet your like required uh, delivery dates. So if Lauren, if you could expand your screen there. Awesome. All right, so if you haven't seen Sin7 before, um, this is Sin7 Core, this is one of our products. Um, and whenever you log in, you just see a dashboard with a whole bunch of key performance indicators. This dashboard is just a, a quick glance at the, the current state and health of your business, if you will. Uh, you can see your different uh, products, your different uh, sales orders, et cetera. But let's go ahead and dive into the production uh, and I know this isn't the fun part, but it's 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 the settings. You got to start with setting that uh, really solid ground, uh, that so solid foundation with your resources. Now, resources in Sin7 could be either your laborers, such as a craftsman or a tailor or a painter. It could also be individual craftsmen, so like Mary the painter, right? Um, but as well as the machines. So the fabric cutting machine, the sewing machine, et cetera, the, the machines or the equipment that you're using to uh, perform the operation. We also have work centers, which is kind of the location where the work is being completed. So it could be a particular table, it could be a particular room or, a, or what have you, or it could be a contract manufacturer. So you've contracted out a particular step in your, your manufacturing uh, process, right? So these people might, um, they, they do the packaging for you, for example. So once you get all of that set up, then you're going to start seeing uh, production orders come in and you'll be able to see, okay, which laborers, which resources uh, do I need for these uh, pr uh, production orders? So here we have a chair, cherry, basic, <laughs> try and say that five times fast, and it's required by the end of uh, August. So you can do by required date backwards, or you can do plan date forward. That comes in handy whenever you're doing things like uh, planning and, and MRP and forecasting. So for this individual item, uh, I can see all the different resources, the people as well as the machines and the components, you know, the actual physical like raw material, or it could be a finished good that I need uh, to fulfill this um, operation or this step. I can hover over the component to see more information. Um, on that, I can see the expected cost of things, the expected waste, et cetera. 
And then whenever I go into the actual production run, this is me running the production order. Um, so I've got all of my steps there. I can see what all the components are, how much of it, and even a little bit of the breakdown of the average costing uh, based on, on previous uh, production runs. All right, so next up, let's talk about how to plan for these production orders. We've got all these orders coming in. Well, first I need to make sure I have availability. So here I've got all my craftsmen um, or all my laborers, all my machines, and how much um, time, how many hours they've got available. Um, if this wasn't a demo database, the, the numbers would probably start to show like, okay, this person was allocated for so many hours. This person has already used a couple of hours. Um, this is how much they have left for the week or the month, uh, et cetera. So here we just, we can see how much availability, uh, how much capacity do we have. In the scheduler, I can start to see when are these manufacturing orders or production orders or work orders, whatever you want to call them. When are these orders happening? When is the work happening? So I can see today's current date there, but then if I scroll Yep, here we go. So here's a manufacturing order that actually shows, nope, there's kind of a halt or a delay because I lack resources. Um, so it, it lets me know what's the holdup, what's the problem. But if I scroll over here, I can actually see two future orders. I've got one on a Tuesday and one on the following Monday. But there's a huge gap in between. So I'm not being super efficient here. I could go into edit mode and then start moving these orders around to say, nope, let's start this on Thursday. That way we're actually filling our, our, um, our shop up. We're, get, we're getting work done. Oh, well, nope, let's move this here. There's an error saying, nope, can't do this because it'll put you behind schedule. So the system's actually smart enough to tell you, yes, you can reschedule things, but I'm not gonna let you reschedule it to put yourself behind. Um, so it looks out for you, right? Um, we can look into the different uh, individual steps or the operations. We can actually change the priority of our production orders. So now this one's a high priority. Um, and we can go ahead and save those changes. And once you save, you'll notice that that uh, one manufacturing order is now a high priority. So uh, folks on the shop floor will, will tackle that one first. Uh, one last little tip or trick is you can actually start working on these production orders from this view. But another of my favorite views is actually uh, the calendar view. This is a new one. We just came out with this a few weeks ago. Um, if you want to plan your production orders, so this is all in the future. This hasn't happened yet. Um, but I can see when these manufacturing orders are currently um, well planned. Like when do we think they're going to happen? I can hover over it to see a little bit more information about this individual production order. Looks like we're going to be making some maple lumber. But then I can go into edit mode and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to move that. I'm going to change that from Monday to Tuesday, right? Um, or maybe I want to change something else around um, just to see like, oh, here we go. I can stack uh, a whole bunch of production orders on one day. Uh, no, I've changed my mind, right? So right now, all I'm doing is just playing around with the schedule. Nothing has been committed yet. This is all just, I'm just playing around with it, right? Just ideas. Now, if I was to move one of these production orders way in the future, um, it would check and see, does this um, break that uh, required by date? Like, am I planning this too far in advance? Um, so it would, it would alert you. Mm -hmm. Here, it's just saying, do you wanna save your changes? Yep, everything looks good. So our dates have been uh, saved. So that is pretty much a rundown of how we do uh, production planning and scheduling and all of that. Um, I think, that was it for this one. So the next step is around, um, oh, brief thing on that. We have an MES app. So sorry, totally forgot to mention this. Um, if you're on the shop floor and you're trying to do the, like the clocking in to a particular operation and you wanna you know, start and then hit complete to capture that true time, um, you can use our MES app on a phone or a tablet or anything. Um, so it's it's made to be used like on the shop floor. A lot of these features are available for on the shop floor uh, in that, in that um, MES app as well. All right, next up is around material requirements planning. Now this, if you're not using MRP, I highly encourage looking into it. So MRP is basically this powerful tool to help you identify what you need to order to create a final product on time. 
Uh, so by using MRP, businesses can make super informed decisions and streamline their operations, make sure that they're getting products out there on time. So Lauren, if we could take a closer view, we'll take, uh, we'll start again, this is Sin7 Core, um, and we'll dive into the products. Again, just a brief uh, view of the dashboard there. Yep. Okay, so in this demo database, I wanna say there's like 10,000 SKUs or something. So we're gonna use the search to identify the individual item. Here we've got gloves. These are like boxing gloves, right? So you may have a whole bunch of items um, and this is just highlighting, we have different costing methods. This is FIFO first in, first out. And there's no bill of materials on this, but we do sell this as a finished good. So this is, I'm, I'm buying boxing gloves um, and I'm selling them just as is. I'm not gonna um, change anything about it, right? I'm, I'm just gonna sell this as a finished good. You may have products that you kind of put together in, you might call them kits or maybe bundles. Um, but these are items where, again, we stock them, uh, but they are considered assemblies. So here, this item just happens to be FIFO, which is first expired, first out, which might mean that something in this item might have an expiration date on it, right? Some, some product in this kit might uh, expire. So this is considered an assembly bill of materials. We also have um, production bill of materials and make to order, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but this is the kit that we are ultimately selling. If I scroll down a little bit, I can see what are those individual components in my assembly or in my kit, right? So we've got hand cream, a gift box, as well as some soap. Um, so if I put these three products together, that's my grooming kit. And that's what I'm ultimately selling. All right, I promised you we would talk about a make to order item. So we're gonna talk about sofas. Uh, this could be if you are doing a make to order item uh, directly to your consumer, like in a, in a shop, or it could be uh, through your B2B portal, right? So we've got our make to order bill of materials. Sofa is the finished product that I'm gonna sell, but you know, each sofa might be unique to the buyer. And it's got an interesting bill of material here. So for one sofa, I actually have an operation, instead of a, a component, a template. And a template is just basically your variations, your options, right? So you can choose your wood, your mattress, your cushion, um, and we'll even dive into to some custom uh, templates that you can put in there. So when we go to look at what are those options? What are those variations? So first up, we've got, you can choose your wood. You know, you've got your maple, your cherry, your walnut, and you can put in thumbnails to show what does that look like. Now, in, in addition to that, you can do, here's your thumbnails for the different fabric, but if they're on a B2B portal, they can also see um, what does that end result look like? You know, if I click that fabric, it'll update the image. Um, here, I've got different seat cushions, as well as a custom element called embroidery. So maybe I wanna have a pillow with a, a fun catchphrase on it. This is considered a custom element. So somebody can you know, tell you what that, that phrase is. And then you can set defaults too. And here I've got the more expensive price default set. Um, but that's just to show you like, what, what does that made to order uh, process look like? Uh, what are those different, um, different variations? Etc. So, okay, we've, we've figured out our, our product structure, right? Just saying that Sin7 supports all of these different product structures. But now I want to run MRP. I want to know how much of what do I need to order in order to hit, maybe it's my forecasting goals, maybe it's um, based on uh, sales that we've already authorized and that are gone through. Um, and I want to see these in draft form. So I want to know like the assembly order, how many of what should I assemble? And it's only in draft. It's only a suggestion at this point. So when I run the MRP, I can see these are the products that MRP is suggesting that I purchase. And these are the locations for those products. Um, now we've got independent demand and dependent demand. And ind independent demand is um, inventory based on things like confirmed customer orders and forecasts. Dependent is the uh, raw materials you need to meet those independent demands. Um, so if we can plan for both, 
uh, ultimately. And then here we've got those uh, individual products. So I wanna see an order for all the products, maybe it's for the supplier. And okay, so I need 30 of all of these. I can actually split this as well. I can split this order. Uh, for now, I'm gonna cancel and go to the results. Earlier, I said something about um, seeing the draft for the assembly orders, right? So if I click on one of these results here, I'll actually see what a suggestion is for an assembly. So it looks like I should be making this gift set here, but what does that gift set include? Oh, it includes all of these different items. And if you look to the right, there's a whole bunch of red numbers, meaning that I'm, I don't have the stock to actually fill this. Um, I don't have them on hand. So I need to be ordering these items for this assembly or this suggested assembly. And I think, yep, I think that shows kind of how our MRP works. Now I'm going to take another moment. Sorry, Redeem. I don't mean to, to steal the spotlight for too long, but I want to give no, an no, no, example go ahead. Go ahead. Of, of like, why is this so important? Why is this so fascinating? And it, it comes down to MRP takes the manual steps out of your processes to make sure that you're, you know, your ordering is accurate. You're not over ordering stuff. You're not under ordering from your suppliers and you're hitting those dates that you need. So the MRP makes those suggestions based on your sales, your forecasting, et cetera, um, all those different settings that we were looking at. So here's an example. Um, don't get out pen and paper because I'm not going to remember these numbers, but let's say you sell whey protein powder. If 100 grams of whey protein plus, say, four other ingredients, you mix all that up and you end up with two kilograms of the product you do sell, which is a vanilla flavored protein powder, you sell it in tubs. Um, each tub is uh, the two uh, kilograms, but you don't sell it individual tubs. You sell a case of 12 tubs. Uh, but forecasting says you want to plan for 450 cases. The question is, how much of that original whey protein powder do you need? <laughs> now, that's that's tough, right? Um, now, imagine doing that for your 40,000 SKUs because it's going to be Black Friday and you want to know which one, which protein powder is going to be really, you know, exciting and fancy and it's going to sell. Um, doing that manually is... Uh, it's going to take a lot of mental, uh, it's just going to take a lot of time, right? So use MRP to use the system to run it and it'll tell you how much of everything you need and when you need to order it. It'll tell you which supplier you should be ordering it from to hit those dates, et cetera. Um, and ultimately, if, if you put a, you know, a, a comma in the wrong place or a decimal point in the wrong place, you could be over or under ordering uh, and just causing yourself a really expensive headache in the end. So MRP is really there to save the day. All right, Redeem, um, speaking of procurements and forecasting, I'll hand it back to you uh, to talk about how to take these insights even further with Inventoro. Here, before I hand it to Redeem, can you just confirm MRP is a part of Sin 7 Core, correct? It's not an additional add-on. So it's in, uh, I know it's in the production uh, module. I can't remember if it's automatically there or if you have to do the manufacturing uh, plan for that. Um, so let me double check on that, but it's it's in Sin7 Core, yeah. I don't know, we'll, we'll follow up with you and confirm that in, in the very near future. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Redeem, back to you. Mm -hmm. So the, the great thing about working with Sin7 is that we have been working on our mutual integration quite a lot. And a lot of the information that we've just seen a couple of moments ago drives directly into our product, right? So we take all the information we get about the products, including the bundles, and we look at historical sales. So this is the, this is the green graph over here. That's what we get from Sin7. And we forecast the blue part, which is your future sales. And I'm just going to make this small one. Yeah. So on a on a forecasting for Black Friday, you want to be looking at uh, products which are highly seasonal. And this is demo data that I'm showing you, but we use the drinks category to have a highly seasonal product, right? So this would be a typical Christmas hit where you would see these are years. This one is set up for May, but let's just pretend it's December. 
where you have very little sales throughout the year and then you have then you sell everything right so it's very hard to uh, prepare for that and you want to and you want to um, look at these products very closely when you're preparing for a black friday way ahead now obviously we've been we've been talking about how you can um, how you make these decisions on what will be your Christmas hit, right? What will you put in that, um, I would say, master promotion, you know, is that 50% off or anything like that? I know, and you can, you want to be thinking about how will it affect the set? So we we put in this part called forecast adjustment, where you can adjust your forecasts based on the whole category, or you can just per, per adjust um, any single product you want. So I would take one product, let's say beer, and I would put on a forecast adjustment and I would put in the dates. So this would be Christmas time, it would start on uh, December till the end of December. And I would put in, uh, put, in a, put in a number, let's say 30% safe. And I, would, and I would sort of put a forecast adjustment on that. Now this immediately translates into the need of more inventory, right? So the, takes me down to the reason why we're actually doing forecasting to begin with. We're doing forecasting to get your inventory right. We want to do not enough inventory. We want to avoid not enough inventory and too much inventory at the same time. So from the, from the forecast, we know how much you will need. And from SIN7, we, we take the information of how much you have in, uh, in your warehouse. And we know that you know in in the level of bundles, and we know that in the level of the actual items that create the create the bundles. So we put all that together, and we try to make a replenishment list. But before we do that, we also need to stop over here. So we were talking about uh, how the departments have all different priorities on what they uh, what they want to promote and how they want to stock up the the Christmas warehouse. So remember, you only have a limited amount of space and you want to overstock on many things, but you need to decide which ones are good. Now, this screen, this feature of ours, which we call winners and losers, does a lot of that job for you because it, it puts all your portfolio into your most profitable items. So this is usually a small number of items which create 80% of your profit, right? You actually see the ratio, I mean, in, in this particular uh, item, you know, would be white wine, creating 5.6% of the overall sales. Now, we are looking at winners and losers, even from a perspective of a single warehouse, right? So what can be a winner in New York doesn't have to be a winner on in your Los Angeles uh, store or, or any other, right? Mm -hmm. So we look at each location, each SKU, and put it in the perspective of it's, if it's a winner, if it's a chaser, chaser is your long tail portfolio, or if it's a loser, and loser is dead stock, you obviously don't want to, don't want to buy that. So when you're making those decisions on which items should we overstock on, you want to play around with this, uh, with this table, everybody in the room looking at you know which ones are the which ones are the items we need to. Make. I'm just going to show you that you can look at all of them, export them into, into an Excel, and then work with that later on with your team, or you just invite them over here as you can have as many users as you want. Right? So we put all that information together. So we have the suppliers, we know their lead times, we know the bundles, we know which parts are important, we know our forecast accuracy, and we can calculate our safety stock. So how do we calculate safety stock? We know that our forecasts are accurate, let's say to 80%, which is sort of global top standard of what forecasting can be. So there's a little bit of error to that, that adds to your safety stock. We also look at your suppliers. We also look at if they are supplying you know, on time. So let's say you know a supplier is supposed to supply in 14 days. That's their sort of contract lead time, but they actually come in 16 days. So the system will remember you know to red flag this supplier and actually you know order a little bit more because they can be late again. So all, all these elements are put into the fact that we come up with a replenishment list. Now this replenishment list 
uses the forecasting, everything we get from Sin7, and tells you what product you need to buy, tells you the order proposal. This is the proposed amount. So it's the perfect amount to, to get enough inventory so you, you do not have stockouts and not to make too much inventory so you don't have too much overstock. Right? And it tells you that on every single day and, and it tells you, again, warehouse specific, right? So you can have several items going to different places based on how your uh, structure is made. You can also have, a, 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 let's say, a master warehouse and, and you know, cross docking warehouses. You can set up the structure like that. You know, the system will, will take a look at it. Now, but coming back to, to preparing for a high season, right? Because high season is a lot about cash flow. We talked about the two strategies you can have uh, you know, at the start. So if you're a rich company, you have good access to cash or your suppliers um, don't need to be paid immediately or whatever, whatever is the means, you want to start buying early for Christmas. If you have the warehouse space and it doesn't cost you too much, you want to you wanna ease your warehouse so you um, so you don't face these difficulties where everybody's running around the place, there's trucks coming in and out all the time, it's chaos, and you want to ease that by doing it slowly if you have the money. If you don't have the money, you do it, you do it fast. But what I want to show you is that you can be looking at your purchasing needs for the day, or I can put up you know, several months ahead. So let's say I can do I can do a custom which would sort of put in your 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 high season, but let's say the high season is sixty days away from us, and it would tell me the overall sort of order I need to make, you know, for that next sixty days, you know, coming, which will also tell me the total price I need to I need to purchase. So we will give you the 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 outcome of what needs to buy and it needs to be done today, but also, how your Christmas or your Black Friday or any high season will look like in terms of uh, inventory demand and how much this inventory demand will cost you. Now, again, you can share this with other people. As we said, you know, these are all sort of collective decisions that you're making. Now you see the demand. Now you understand that you need 5,000 pieces of red wine. Okay, do we have the warehouse capacity to, to store that? Do we have the winery to, su to support this? Uh, are we going to put this on a discount and actually increase even the, um, the amount? Is this a top selling product? Is it going to make a profit? Well, yes, it's a winner. You know, can, this, can this be a Christmas hit? Maybe. That's why, why don't we create a what if scenario? So using our software is, uh, is, a, is a good place to start to make these uh, what if scenarios, and especially when it's linked to Sin7, you are sure that you're getting these, these data in time and on time, exactly how they're stored in your, in your inventory system. So there's no data loss in between. And as a matter of fact, we also send the information back, right? So if, I, if, if this would be sort of approved by you, you would send your order proposals back into the API, and then they would appear as order proposals within SIN7 where you can actually do the uh, purchase order management directly right so i said you know that by the time you know christmas ends one third of your inventory will be not sold i mean this is the industry standard of how a christmas season looks like you know you want to have that number as low as possible and it's all about you know how well you cooperate as an organization with all the departments that i've been talking about but eventually you're going to have a number now you want to see uh, which items actually represent the overstock, you know, come January, February, because you're going to have a different role now. Now you need to sell out your overstock. Now you need to get rid of that as, as soon as possible to, to free up that cash, to free up your warehouse, to, uh, to start um, smart buying again. So we have this section called reports. And mind you, we do send these reports out as CSVs. Now, the reason for that is not is that we're technically incompetent. The reason for that is that a lot of our customers and the use cases that we face is that these CSVs are used for further automation. So you can always send a CSV into a different system 
which will work with it and put it into some sort of automation process later on. So that's why we keep them, I would say, raw. So one of those one of those reports is called the stock overview, right? So it will give you that overstock and inventory increase number. I'm just going to show you that very quickly. How will that look like? So it will have all your SKUs listed over here, right? And you would have the on-hand inventory number, you would have the optimum inventory number, and this would be your overstock. And this would be your overstock in money. So we'll come January and February and you wanna start making those post-season discounts. You wanna sort of sell out all this uh, uh, excess goods as soon as possible. Well, the first thing you need to do understand is what is your excess stock? And this, this table just tells you very quickly that probably these four, uh, these four items, which create, I don't know, 60% of your overstock are going to have something to do with how you, how you, uh, how you get rid of them. Right? And obviously, you can have a list of 100,000 SKUs. This is just an example. And you can do the same assessment on, on the suppliers, right? So sometimes your suppliers will offer you a, a buyback. You know, why not? You know, it's a... Uh, don't think of access inventory as something that is just sitting in your warehouse. You know, warehouses are expensive. You pay for warehouse space, right? Especially when it sits there too long, you know, it's it's not only that it's not making money, it's actually taking money away from you. So a buyback might be actually worthwhile. But I can, I, I, you know, take this data and, and look at it from a perspective of, of the suppliers, right? So I can look at what is the access inventory of, of each supplier and how much money that represents. Again, it gives me the tactical information you know, for the whole organization on how you're gonna be dealing with that post, uh, post high season uh, time. Right? So looking into, data, into these data, taking it from SIN7, pushing it back to SIN7 and talking as a whole organization uh, you know, under, under a system of one truth is your best way to, to handle um, your Black Friday event. And mind you, we've been working in this industry for quite long and we've seen the biggest players you know, on the market and trust me, they're not perfect in it. <laughs> so when it comes to Black Friday, it's only a matter of how little mistakes we can do. How can we avoid the errors? Which they can be quite expensive, they can be damaging for the company, but you, if you want to turn uh, your Black Friday or any other high season into success, plan ahead, train, use these what if scenarios, look into the data, make data decisions and make it as a whole organization by looking into what um, consequences it has throughout the supply chain. So I think I'm gonna pass the word back. Thank you so much, Radeem. That was fantastic. I know uh, we're running a little over on time, um, but I feel like everything that was shared today is really valuable information. Um, so just in our last couple of minutes, if you have any questions, I did see we, Santana had sent in one um, asking for information on where to find Inventoro. Um, please go ahead, submit any questions you have. Um, I do want to thank you for attending today's webinar. Before we get to the questions, I will remind you, um, we are going to send a follow-up after this, um, but I will let you all type some more questions if you have them. I'll bring it back to the three of us um, and maybe just start, where where can they find Inventoro? Well, the best way to find Inventoro is to go to Inventoro.com. You can take a free trial. If you already have a SIN7 account, you can connect that account. And within a couple of moments, we'll source in your data. We do need a couple of hours sometimes to do the first calculation. I mean, our calculations are very sophisticated. We use over 100 algorithms, uh, including AI, deep learning, machine learning, as well as statistical methods. So it's not it's not naive. It takes a lot of time, but it's uh, you know within the day you'll get your first results. It, you can try it for free. And you can talk to us if you have any questions on, on other data integrations, if that is your case. Inventor.com, that's the place. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Radeem. Um, We've got kind of a two-level question. Is it too early to start forecasting for November? If they want to try loading their forecast data, can they do it in a trial? 
Yeah. So we like to source in at least two years worth of data to learn your seasonalities. But if you don't have sort of, in a, you know, that's so much sales, five months, six months worth of sales data will, will give you enough to forecast. And we forecast two years ahead, right? So once we do the first calculation, we will show you the next two years worth of purchasing and we'll show you the next two years worth of sales. If we, if we get all the historical data, like I said, two years, we know how your seasons work and we'll put that into perspective, right? The more you use the system, the higher the accuracy gets. It gets to learn you, it gets to know you, it gets to understand your habits, the habits of your suppliers, of your goods, etc. Thank you. Um, next question. Since the last two years have been very abnormal, do we expect this year to be similar? Hard to say, <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I would say that, that we can use our traditional forecasting tools to, um, to make estimates and things like that. But with using things like Inventoro, you can actually make more intelligent uh, uh, estimations and forecasting. Um, so, you know, we, we typically want to look at around two years plus of your, your last, um, two years of sales orders. Um, but yeah, you can actually put in, uh, I estimate 10% growth, you know, or what have you, and that will actually, uh, impact your results. Redeem, do you, do you want to add on to that? Yeah, yeah, and especially, I mean, like, we, we faced this question more during COVID, right, because everything changed. And people were saying, like, how do you apply historical data to COVID? And the thing is that, as I said, we have over 100 algorithms. Well, some of them, they're called fast adapt. They're also called seasonal sensing for all the supply chain people in the room. Uh, and they quickly adapt to changes which are abnormal, right? So they, they immediately, when they when they feel something is not, going according to how it should, they will immediately change the forecast and update it each day. And, and this is important to be said that our forecast is calculated each day on every single SKU, every single location, all the 100 algorithms on each SKU, every single location, every day, <laughs> right? So it, it gets to be updated a lot. And, and uh, like I said, we don't, we don't face problems with you know, market changes. Uh, our biggest enemy is uh, data. So we, we, we like to call this garbage in, garbage out. But especially when you're using SIN7, we get a lot less garbage because they're known to having their data structures correctly. That's why we like to work with them. That's why I'm on this webinar to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're biased. We enjoy it. Redeem, so thanks. Um, we do have a lot of questions coming in, which is great. If we don't get to your question, just in mindfulness of everyone's time, we will follow up with you and answer any questions that are still available or still open. Um, I'm going to try and hit on a couple that are specific to Inventoro. Um, so the few that I can see, and I'll kind of combine them quickly. Um, does the Inventoro trial include all available features? Is it available in the UK and in Europe? And I think those are like the two ones I should group. Yes. So the inventory trial uh, takes all features. It's unlimited in all aspects, including users in the trial. And the trial only starts to run only after you connect your data, right? So on, on, the, on the demo data that I've been showing you right now, you can play with that for months. We're not going to sort of charge you on that. Once you do connect your data, you'll get 14 days Usually we grant all our um, requests to extend the trial, you know, so we can give you a month or anything you need, just talk to us, which is normal people. And we're available globally, uh, despite the fact that we are in Central Europe, we have clients on five continents. There you go. So so no penguins using Inventoro yet, not yet? No. <laughs> Sometimes I don't I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go ahead and call it these. There are some other questions um, that are really coming in that are great. I will please know that I will direct these to their appropriate contact and we will follow up with you after this webinar. Um, because we're about 10 minutes over than anticipated, which is a great place to be. It means that 
that we've given you valuable information and there are great questions coming through. So thank you all so much for attending. Uh, again, we will follow up with a recording of this webinar um, with contact information as needed. Um, but thank you all so much, Radim Sierra. Thank you so much. You were spectacular. Could not have asked for better panelists. Um, and I hope everyone has a great rest of your week. And, and thanks so much, everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for having me. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a good night. See you. Bye-bye.